Uh, good day. I'm Boydou Kren Randolph, and today is the second lesson on this lesson. The second lesson on fluid dynamics. So we're going to the gradients of a scalar of a vector field. So when you talk about the gradient of a vector, is a tensor which tells us how the vector field changes in any direction. So you know when you talk about gradient, gradient just means change. So when you talk about the gradients of a vector field, it helps us to know where or the direction in which the vector field is changing. So you remember that when you find the gradient of a scalar of a vector field, you get a vector field because you realize that we are we are using the gradient of the vector field to know the direction, and we can only know the direction when we have the ijk component. So the ijk component tells us the change in those components, so the changes of direction in those components. So when the gradient of a scalar phi, when you have a scalar phi, then the gradient of it is given by del phi, which is equal to this particular relation here. So Let's show the working here. So, we're talking about the gradient of a vector field. We've learned the definition. So, the gradient of the vector field is represented by this particular symbol, the gradient symbol. So, this gradient symbol on its own, when you are dealing with the two dimension, then it is given by del del x, del del y. When you are dealing with three dimension, it's given by del del x, del del y, del del c. That's the gradient operator on its own. So when you have a scalar phi and you want to find the gradient of that scalar phi, then that means that we have phi. So the gradient of phi, which is del phi, will be equal to del phi del x comma del phi del y comma and del phi del z so this becomes our grad that's the gradient and if you want to find the gradient field then we just add i j k so this is the gradient or popularly known as the grad of our the scale of our vector field and the gradient field is given by the phi the x i plus the phi the y j and then plus the phi the z k. So let's illustrate this with a quick example. So you can get our example from our PDF here. So for example, when you take a scalar x square y z cube. So x square y z cube. So we are supposed to find the gradient of this scalar. So you realize that this is going to give us the phi the x comma the phi the y and the phi the c. So remember that phi is given by s square y z cube. So that means that the gradient is going to give us del del x of x square y z cube. Then del del y of s square y z cube again and comma del del z of x square y z cube. So then now we are supposed to do partial differentiation here. So, when we differentiate this partial with respect to x, that means we are going to get 2xyz cube. And this is going to give us, with respect to y, we are going to get x square z cube. With respect to z, we are going to get 3x square y z square. So, you realize that this becomes the grad. And to find the gradient field, which is represented by the same operator, will give us 2xyz cube i and plus x square 
z cube j then plus 3x square y z square k so this is for the i component and that's the change occurring in the i component this is the change occurring in the j component and this is the change occurring in the k component so that's how to find the gradient of a vector field but note that we always find gradient of a scalar of a vector field and when you find the gradient of the scale of the vector field we always end up with a vector field so that's something that i want you to take note of so that's all for this lesson thank you